Hi, in this video, we'll be discussing on both the differentiation and integration of trigonometric functions and exponential functions. We'll also be discussing about integration as a reverse of differentiation. In part A of this question, given that integrate e to the power of negative 2x multiplied by f of x dx gives a result of e to the power of negative 2x sine 4x plus c, you are to find the value of f of pi over 4, and that is a 4 marks question. In part b of this question, it is given that f of x is such that f double prime of x is equal to 4 sine bracket 3x plus pi over 2 close brackets plus e to the power of 2x. Given also that f prime of 0 is equal to 2 thirds and f of 0 is equal to 65 over 36, you are to find the expression for f of x, and that is a 5 marks question. You are to note that both part A and B are considered separate questions. Now, you might want to pause this video to give this question a try, and when you're ready, keep watching. In part A of this question, we are given that integrates e to the power of negative 2x multiplied by f of x dx will give us the right hand side of this equation, which is e to the power of negative 2x sine 4x plus c. Using the integration as a reverse of differentiation, we can do the reverse. In other words, if we differentiate e to the power of negative 2x multiplied by sine 4x plus c, we should be able to get e to the power of negative 2x multiplied by f of x on the left. So, before we dive straight into the differentiation of the exponential function and sine, in this case, let us first visit the product rule of differentiation. So by the product rule of differentiation, in this case, differentiate uv with respect to x, where u is the first item and v is the second item. So differentiating uv with respect to x will give us, copy down the first item in yellow, which is a u, differentiate the second item, which is a dv over dx, plus copy down the second item in greens, multiply by, differentiate the first item which is the du over dx. It is worth noting that u and v must be a functions of x for this to work. Once you are able to get the product rule of differentiation, you might want to revisit on the derivatives of trigo function, in this case, derivative of sine f of x. So, by differentiating sine f of x, differentiating a sine will give us a cos fx multiply by the differentiation result of the angle. So that is the derivative of sine fx. After we are done with this, we can then go on to the derivative of exponential functions. So by derivative of exponential functions, in this case, derivative of e to the power of fx, differentiating e to the power of fx with respect to x will actually give us e to the power of fx multiplied by f prime of x, which is the differentiation result of the power. So differentiating e to the power fx means to say you copy down e to the power fx multiply by the differentiation result of the power. With these three formulas in place, we can then proceed to start to solve this question. So in the first step of part A questions, we are to differentiate the right hand side. So since differentiating constant will give us a zero, we can ignore that. So we will want to differentiate e to the power negative 2x multiply by sine 4x. And that, we have to use a product rule, where e to the power of negative 2x refers to the one in yellow, the first item, and sine 4x refers to the one in green, the second item. So differentiating this will actually give us, copy down the first item in yellow, differentiate the second item, differentiate sine should actually give us a cos. Since differentiating a sine will give us a cos, we still have to multiply the differentiation result of the angle in this case, Differentiate 4x will actually give us a 4. Plus, copy down the second item in greens. Differentiate the first item in yellow. Differentiating e to the power of negative 2x means to say we have to copy down e to the power of negative 2x like this. Multiply by the differentiation result of the angle. So differentiating a negative 2x will actually give us a negative 2. So this is after we use the product rule of differentiations. So once we have the product rule of differentiation, we can then proceed on to the next step, which in this case will mean we factor out e to the power of negative 2x from this string of expression. So if we factor out e to the power of negative 2x, we open up a bracket, 
the first term within the bracket will be a 4 cos 4x and the second term within the bracket will be a negative 2 sine 4x. Close bracket. So we have successfully differentiated this part. Let us proceed to the next step in this case. Integrating the result of this will actually give us e to the power negative 2x sine 4x plus c. Once we have established this, we can then do a comparison of the original equation in the question. So e to the power negative 2x on the left, we can do a comparison. That will mean to say that fx is actually this part. 4 cos 4x minus away 2 sine 4x. Now let us write it out in the mathematical statements like this. By comparison, this is now our fx. So replacing x to be a pi over 4 so that we can find the value of f of pi over 4. In this case, replacing x to be a pi over 4, we should be able to get this. Replacing all the x's to be pi over 4, all the x's to be pi over 4, we can then evaluate this with the special angles, giving us a result of negative 4. And that is the answer for part A. For part B of this question, we are given an expression for f double prime of x, as well as the result for f prime of 0, and the result for f of 0. In order to find the required expression for f of x, we need to first integrate f double prime of x to give us f prime of x, and replacing x to be 0, setting the expression to be equal to 2 thirds. After which, we can then integrate f prime of x, and setting the x to be a 0, expression to be a 65 over 36, we should be able to find the required expressions in this case. So before we dive straight into the solution, we might want to revisit on the integration of a sine function as well as the integration of an exponential function. So with the first formula here, integration of sine over here integrates sine ax plus b dx. Integrating a sine will actually give us a negative cos of the same angle divided by the differentiation result of the angle of ax plus b giving us an a plus c refers to the arbitrary constants for this integration result. At the same time, we will also want to revisit on the integration of an exponential function over here. Integrates e to the power of ax plus b with respect to x will actually give us the same result of e to the power of ax plus b divided by the differentiation of the power in this case, differentiation of the power of ax plus b will actually be an a plus c once again refers to the arbitrary constants. With that in place, we can then start with our first step for this question. In our first step, f prime of x can be found by integrating the right side of this expression, which is the f double prime of x. In the second step, we can then start to do our integrations. Integrating a sine will actually give us a negative cos divided by the differentiation result of the angle, which will give us a 3. Integrating a e to the power of 2x will give us e to the power of 2x divided by the differentiation result of the power, in this case a 2, plus a c1. The c1 refers to the first arbitrary constant from this integration. We are to distinguish both the c1 and c2 to be clearer in our presentation of workings. So once we have that in mind, we can therefore copy down this part f prime of 0 to be equal to 2 thirds as stated in the equations, as well as replacing all the x's to be a 0 on the left hand side, replacing all the x's to be 0 like this on the left hand side, setting the whole expression to be equal to 2 thirds from the questions. This is so that we can, we can then start to solve for our c1s. Solving for c1 will actually give us a result of 1 over 6, and replacing c1 back into the f prime of x equations will give us the answer for this. So this is the result for the f prime of x, which is the negative 4 thirds cosine bracket 3x plus pi over 2 close bracket plus half e to the power of 2x plus a 1 over 6. The next step of this will mean that we can then start to integrate the f prime of x giving us this. So integrating an f prime of x will actually give us an f of x like this. 
So before we continue with the next step, we might want to revisit on the integration for a cosine function. So by integrating a cosine function, it's very similar to integrating a sine function. So we have the formula on the left hand side. Integrating a cos ax plus b dx will actually give us a sine ax plus b divided by the differentiation result of the angle, in this case an a. Once again, we do a plus c like this. So once we have that, we can then proceed to our integration of this. So integrating a cosine will actually give us a sine. Divided by the differentiation result of the angle, once again, we divide by 3. So negative 4 thirds divided by 3 will actually give us negative 4 over 9. Integrating e to the power of 2x divided by 2 will actually give us a e to the power of 2x divided by 4. Integrating a constant of 1 over 6 will actually give us a 1 over 6x plus a c2. The c2 is a result of this integration from the arbitrary constant in this case. So once we have that, we can then proceed to the next step, which is once again replacing x to be a 0, setting the whole expression to be a 65 over 36 in order to solve for our c2, which in this case will be a 2. So once we have our c2, we replace back into the fx equation and that's our answer. So replacing c2 to be a 2, your fx will therefore be given to be a negative 4 over 9 sine bracket 3x plus power over 2 close bracket plus a quarter e to the power of 2x plus a 1 over 6. And that is the answer for part b. Thank you for watching. I hope you like this video and see you in the next one.